with, which ties in with uh, what Dory just shared with us towards the end. It's a picture of a dog, a very happy dog. <laughs> um, this symbolizes to me, um, similarly to what Dory said, pure joy, just being in the moment, fully alive, experiencing life. Um, that's what I think animals teach us. And uh, that's what I think story is. This is a mountain laurel branch. And I picked it on a walk with my husband in, on a nature trail. It really spoke to me because of its shape. Um, and I separately wrote a poem, which I think go goes hand in hand with this uh, branch. My once perfect body has become a story turned by time and weather. So my uh, title is The Poetics of Storytelling. I'd like to start off with saying, um, with storytelling and ceremony, we are not telling a fairy tale, we're telling what really happened. So first thing is when we're meeting with a couple or a family, um, we need to gather as much of the couple's or family's story as possible. We need that so that we have plenty to work with when we're gonna sit down and write the ceremony. Um, in my process of uh, learning how to work with couples and families, I realized sometimes I didn't get enough information and then when I sat down to write the ceremony, I was like, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't have enough. Um, so everyone is different and some people um, like to speak, they like to tell their stories. So. Um, when I meet with a couple or family, it, as part of the interview, I ask them some of the questions that are on the questionnaire so that I can get their verbal uh, responses, which are different than what one would write. Um, there, also, I can observe the person and um, observe their facial expressions and hear what parts they laughed about and uh, when I'm and then there's the dynamic between the couple and the family when one person talks someone else jumps in you know with their perspective or an added dimension to the story so it's very alive and I write very fast <laughs> and I have a really good pen that writes fast so um, I love doing that it really gives me a lot to work with and then what I do is um, I say to the couple, I'm going to send you a questionnaire for the, the, that with the rest of the questions that I'd like for you to answer. I'll block out those that you already answered. Feel free to add more to those if you'd like. Um, you don't have to. And then they just fill in the rest. So I have it you know, both ways. I have the verbal story and then I have the written story. Now there are some people who are not verbal and they don't express themselves well in the moment. So for them it's okay. I had a couple where the husband was very articulate and or rather the, uh, the male fiance was, the groom-to-be was not very, was very articulate and the bride-to-be preferred to write. She expresses herself better through writing. So I said, that's fine. He told the stories and she nodded and she added here and there. And I said, now you can write as much as you'd like on the questionnaire. And that worked really well. Uh, and of course, it's really important to ask questions. So when I ask them the questions and then they tell me their story, more questions often come so that I can get even more information about what they're telling me. So the next thing is the story itself. When you sit down to write the story, when we tell a story in ceremony, we're telling what happened, what is happening now, and what we hope will happen in the future. But a story is not just a collection of facts. Story is also about our feelings and our actions and the reasons why we took those actions. Story is also about what we hoped would happen and didn't, and what happened instead. Story is the personal details of experience and time. Feelings are what make a story alive and interesting to listen to. We are captivated hearing how people felt and what they thought in a given situation. 
We don't just want to know the dry facts of what happened. We want to know, what did you say? How did you feel? What did you do? What happened next? How did that impossible situation unfold? Poetry expresses the feeling of a story. Through poetry, you gather feeling. And poetry writing makes connections through feeling, emotion, and metaphor. Now, I like to think of the poetry in a story as being lyrical. When I write my ceremonies, I don't feel satisfied until my ceremony sings. It's a feeling of singing when I have found the appropriate words and the appropriate rhythm. It's not quite the same as writing a poem, but there is a certain lyricism that you can express when you write. And it, isn't, it also isn't about um, using fancy words. Sometimes, you know, when you're just starting to write ceremony, one thinks you have to think of the most, you know, the most difficult and highest words you can think of, and that's not always what's necessary. Simple is very effective. Simple and honest and true. What is honest and true about this couple, this family, and this event that they're celebrating in their lives? And then you can build upon that. So, Think of it as lyricism. The dictionary meaning of lyrical is having the form and musical quality of a song characterized or by or expressing spontaneous direct feeling, expressing deep personal emotion or observations. So I would next like to share with you um, examples of what I have received in uh, some of the questionnaires and in meeting with a couple. I love it when I have a couple who expresses to me. They really give me what their feelings were and what they saw, what they smelled. Oh, I remember the exact necklace that she wore and the shade of sweater. That's beautiful. Rather than, okay, we met and we ate dinner. <laughs> and we liked each other. You know, it's not much to work with. But, so I try to, some people are ready with those feelings and in the images and emotions and others not so much, but you can probe and pry and usually get more. Um, for example, I had one couple where I found the, the groom to be to be, oh, he was wonderful with his feelings and emotions and one thing he expressed was where they were getting married represented to him the natural world with all of its rhythms, with its trees and the water, dancing with its urban electric partner, one of the most romantic cities in the world. Yes, I was like, <laughs> couldn't ask for more <laughs> to work with. So how I incorporated that was a bride and groom chose to have their wedding here at the Boathouse in Central Park, New York City, because it represents to them a synthesis of nature and city life. Here we see the serene water, the beauty of the autumn trees, and the urban skyline. As groom says, the rhythms of nature, dancing with its urban electric partner, one of the most romantic cities of the world. City life is a marvelous example of our creativity. We dream, we build, we set goals and achieve them. Nature reflects the mystery of our souls, the rhythms and seasons of our lives, and our innate capacity to regenerate. In the cycle of life, one stage of being ends, and a new stage of being begins. Bride and groom's marriage is a new beginning, which only became possible after previous endings. This worked well, particularly for this couple, because the groom had had a divorce, and it was very important to him to express in the ceremony that he had this rite of passage. He had been married before, he had been divorced, he had feelings about that, he went through a period of metamorphosis after, and now this was a new beginning. And so I was able to use what he wrote about how he felt about the place where he was getting married, express that as well as tie it into uh, the marriage itself and the fact that this was a new beginning for them and talk about what the endings were as well as what the new beginning is. So that worked really well. Um, another example is uh, a couple who, where the groom-to-be proposed to the bride-to-be on a camping trip and 
he uh, 